My name is Eric Linz and I am Field Application Engineer at LED Connectivity in Europe. Today we're going to talk about the Centrios RG1XX LoRa WAN gateway and demonstrate configuring the gateway for LoRa basic station setup and registering it at the ThinkStack version 3 Community Edition. TTN supports the LoRa basic station LNS protocol, which is preferred over the legacy UDP packet forwarder. Some of the advantages are a centralized update and configuration management, TLS and token-based authentication, centralized channel plan management, and no dependency on local timekeeping. I will start with a brief overview of the RG1XX and its features by going through some slides and then demonstrate the actual setup process by a screencast. So let's get started. The RG1XX LoRaWAN gateway is based on a powerful embedded Linux system and offers seamless LoRaWAN to cloud connectivity over Wi-Fi or Ethernet. It is available both as an indoor version as well as an outdoor version with IP67 rated housing. Multiple interfaces are combined into the gateway hardware, like a LoRa One concentrator card for the European 868 and the North American 950 MHz band, our WB50 NBT certified Wi-Fi module and a standard Ethernet interface. An intuitive web-based interface allows simple configuration of all subsystems and multiple presets for external LoRa network servers are available. For the North American region, we also offer a cellular RG191 version, which adds LTE CAT1 internet connectivity. All cellular parameters can be configured through the web interface and modem status information can be monitored. The RG191 is also available as IP67 outdoor version. Now let's connect the RG1XX to the ThinkStack using Basic Station. The following steps require an account at the ThinkStack Community Edition, a local Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection to the RG1XX and access to the Gateway's web interface. Detailed information on the gateway setup is available in our user guide and we also have an application node available on basic station setup. After logging into the gateway's web interface, we see the dashboard with information on all subsystems. First check if the installed firmware version of your gateway matches the one shown here. If it does not match, open the system settings tab and update your firmware by entering the firmware update URL from the user guide. Back on the dashboard, make sure to have either Wi-Fi or, as shown here, Ethernet connectivity set up properly indicated by the green dot. For now, we just grab the Gateway EUI from the dashboard and copy it to the clipboard, because we need this in a while. Alternatively, the Gateway EUI is printed on the bottom label of the Gateway. Now let's go to the ThinkStack homepage and log in. After login, we see the console and can select Register Gateway. If we do not have any gateways registered yet, we can directly add one, otherwise we see a list of existing gateways and can select Add New Gateway. The following settings need to be filled in. Enter a unique gateway ID, copy the gateway UI from the clipboard or grab it from the gateway label. You can give the gateway a name and a description if you want. The gateway server address should not be changed because it corresponds to your region. Then scroll down to the LoRaWAN options and select the proper frequency plan for your region. I'm based in Germany, so I select the default plan for 868 MHz in Europe. That's all which has to be set. We scroll down and create the gateway. The next step for basic station setup is the creation of an API key for the gateway to connect to the LoRa network server. Select API keys from the left side menu and then add API key. Give the key a name, like lns.key, and then we need to grant individual rights to the key. For the lns key we select link as gateway to a gateway server for traffic exchange. And then we create the key. Now we get prompted to copy the newly created key to the clipboard. So let's copy the key and confirm. Now everything is prepared to actually configure our gateway. So let's go back to the Gateway Web Interface and select the LoRa setting tab. For basic station setup, we do not select a preset here, but go to the forwarder page and select Semtec Basic Station from the drop-down menu. The LNS server address can be found in our application node and copied into the LNS server text box. The application node also shows a link to a TTN page for downloading a server certificate, which we need next. Open the link in your browser Scroll down to Let's Encrypt and download the certificate here. It's worth mentioning that the RG1XX also supports other certificate types. 
If using a single certificate and that certificate expires, the gateway will stop connecting until the certificate is being updated. Concatenated certificate lists avoid this and they are well supported by the RG1XX. Please check the application note on details. Next we need to generate a key file from the previously created API key. This can be done quite simply in a command window. The command is in our application node and so we can enter the first part of the command. Then copy the key into the window and append the remaining part of the command. Now we have a key file called tc.key. Back in the gateway's web interface we select the server certificate file and then the key file and upload them. Finally we select update in the server configuration and if everything worked correct we see the gateway is connected. Going back to the TTN console we should also see here that the gateway did connect and when it was last seen. Since we did not yet create an application and register devices we won't see live data here. So let's continue and create an application. We select applications from the top menu and add application. After entering an application ID and optionally a name, we can create the application and see the application overview page. An application without an end device is like a fish out of water, so let's have an end device. I will use one of our Centrius RS1XX LoRaWAN sensors for this. The RS1XX is a multi wireless sensor device with Bluetooth and LoRaWAN in an IP65 rated enclosure with integrated antennas. Bluetooth is being used for device configuration with our Centrios smartphone app and on the sensor side it provides an internal temperature and humidity sensor. We also have alternative versions with external temperature sensors as well as a magnetic door open close switch. So let's get back to TTN and register the sensor device. On the application overview page we select end devices and then add end device. Many devices, just like our RS1XX, can be simply selected from a sequence of drop-down menus. We start with the brand and select Laird, and then select the RS1XX with integrated temperature and humidity sensor. Hardware and firmware version drop-downs are preset then, and we finally need to select the region with the frequency plan. When done, an image of the selected sensor is shown. Then scroll down to enter the registration data of the sensor. There are three options available for the frequency plan, we choose the recommended one. The application EUI is preset in our sensor, so we copy it from there, as well as the device EUI of the sensor and the application key. Finally we need to enter an end device ID and select register end device. TTN then shows an overview page of the registered device, which includes a box for live data. When activating the sensor, we should see a join request first, followed by data packets. Here comes the join request. And here come uplink data packets. The live data is also available in a larger view here. The payload here is displayed as raw hex numbers and so it's hardly readable. To get a clearer view into the data, we can select a payload formatter here, which converts the raw payload into both a more human readable format as well as better suited for an application server like JSON format. For our RS1XX, we can select repository from the drop down box and TTN will automatically select the proper one from our GitHub repository. Then we save the changes and go back to the live data tab. When we now look into the live data, we get a much clearer view into the uplink payload and can identify battery voltage, humidity and temperature values easily. I would like to end this presentation with a short overview on the relevant documents like the user guide for the regular RS1XX gateway and the US RG191 version with LTE cellular connectivity as well as the application node on basic station setup. Below you find a table with the part numbers of all regional devices. Thank you very much for your attention and take care.